Let's move on to understanding why, or I mean, sorry, the purpose of a business level strategy in uh, building strategy in a broader sense. Fundamentally, business level strategies exist to create differences between a firm's position and those of a competitor's. Now, once again, I've, I've alluded to the fact that we're going to talk a lot this week, particularly in the online discussion forum about Blue Ocean Strategy. And the relative position between you and a competitor becomes less important or irrelevant, potentially, uh, in the way that you look at things when you evaluate Blue Ocean Strategy. It doesn't do away with the competitors, but it fundamentally is, becomes less of a driver. And the notion of value innovation and customer-driven thought processes become more important. So sort of hold that in the back of your mind. It's going to be something that we're going to consider again and again in this week's discussion. And once we get through Blue Ocean Strategy this week, I hope that you'll be thinking about it as we explore some of the other topics we'll be discussing in the coming weeks. But in the context of competition, and in the context of the materials covered in the textbook, uh, we've learned that, you, that part of what you need to do to differentiate yourself with competitors is to make some very critical decisions about the activities that you will either perform differently to meet customer needs or the activity, new activities you'll adopt to meet customer needs or both. And firms need to learn how to integrate their activities, which is really just a bundle of things you do, in a way that creates superior value for their customers. Basically, companies are more successful if they build systems of activities which are typically more sustainable than companies that um, build their strategy on the basis of individual activities. Individual activities include, for example, do you use a sales force or not? Do you have a particularly distinctive process technology? Are there certain product features that are, you have that are better than others? Those individual activities tend to be easier to replicate if you bundle them together in a way that's unique so that your whole system of operation is the basis for your competitive advantage against your competitors or, in again, using Blue Ocean strategy sort of framework, or it's that integrated set of activities that allows you to explore um, new areas, new blue oceans, which we'll be describing, uh, where you can develop entirely new pockets of value innovation that you can reach out to customers in ways they wouldn't have expected you to be able to reach the, to them, um, then you are in a position with this sort of bundled group of activities to have both a sustainable advantage over your competitors, but also something that's going to be very, very difficult to replicate. Southwest Airlines, as the book described, does an especially good job of integrating its activities in a way that's been that's very difficult to replicate. It's been a key source of, of Southwest Airlines' ability to compete more profitably than its competitors. And it's been very, very hard to imitate because its activities are so tightly integrated that any one of those things that sort of differentiates Southwest from its competitors on its own may be an easy to um, or relatively easy to imitate but it's not easy to imitate the sort of bundle of activities and the way that they are integrated together. If you go to the book on page uh, 106 in figure 4.1, 4 there's a nice chart that shows Southwest Airlines activity system and really illustrates, I think, better than just about anything how uh, a, a range of activities can be integrated in one business to create a truly competitive um, advantage. Uh, I'm going to just kind of show you that here and talk a little bit about it. As you can see on this chart, the, the blue dots really represent perhaps the single or the, 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 the highest level um, activities of Southwest where Southwest has been especially uh, competitive. It starts with frequent reliable departures. Wherever you go and wherever you fly into Southwest, and I'm guessing many of you have probably flown in Southwest, um, they typically offer multiple departures in a day. They tend to come and go pretty reliably. They are able to do that in part if you move to the next blue dot down 
um, because they have a lean, very highly productive ground crew that gets planes up in the air quickly, um, keeps planes uh, at the gate for a limited amount of time, and that allows them to get a much higher level of aircraft utilization. They use only 737s, so from an equipment perspective, they can turn aircraft quickly. If there's mechanical problems, they can substitute aircraft in and out. All of their pilots and all of their crew and all of their ground crew are trained on the same aircraft, so they're able to rotate quickly, um, and that allows them to move into the air quickly. The less time spent at the gate means there's more hours in the air for every piece of equipment. That's the true utilization. They keep their ticket prices competitive. Um, they do short haul point to point in secondary airports, which means instead of having hubs in expensive major airports, they're paying less for gates because they're in secondary airports that love to attract them. In our area, they're at Bradley. Uh, Bradley's not a major airport. Bradley loves to have them, charges them less than it would cost for them to be at JFK uh, or Logan. They have been slipping in this regard. They are in some major airports now. But fundamentally, even in major cities, they try to pick secondary airports. In Chicago, for example, they don't go in and out of O'Hare. They go in and out of Midway, which is a cheaper uh, uh, airport to fly in and out of. They provide limited passenger services. So they don't give you all the services you might get on another aircraft. But that means that they have to do less. For example, no meals means other than some ba bags of uh, uh, chips and a few other things like that and, and making sure some beverages are on the plane. They don't need to stock food of any kind on their planes. Um, they are able then to ensure that, you know, sort of full circle back, they're back to reliable departures. If you look at all the green dots, you can see some of the subsidiary components that allow them to get some of this done. As I said, lean, high pro uh, lean highly productive ground crews, that's because they got that, that allows them to do 15-minute gate turnarounds. Um, no seat assignment, uh, on the one hand, allows them to um, keep costs low, but it also adds to the fact that they're able to get people on and off planes more quickly. Uh, automatic ticket machines means there's fewer people on, at the gates that need to spend as much time with them. Um, they have, um, as I said up in er, earlier, you can see up here in the uh, middle right, they, the standardized fleet of 737s has allowed them um, greater flexibility. So this is a nice model of an incredibly well-integrated model, uh, in, an integrated set of activities that al allows Southwest to be competitive. Now look at some of their competitors. If you look at some of the national established airlines, the Uniteds, the um, Deltas, they use multiple aircraft. They cannot turn aircraft as quickly. Um, uh, they provide more services, which require more cost, more um, staff. Their ground crew and other crew are not experienced in multiple, uh, have multiple aircraft to support, multiple sizes, multiple parts. Um, so their networks are more complex, and they can't be undone tomorrow. You can't replace all your aircraft with 737s overnight. The only airlines that are even coming close to replicating this model tend to be newer startups, JetBlue, to some degree has tried to use some elements of this model while they've enhanced it in other ways. But you begin to see why an integrated batch of activities can create a substantial uh, advantage for a company over relying on any one component. For example, just having 15-minute gate turnaround if you didn't have all of these other elements, that might be something someone else could steal, and it might not, in fact, enhance the overall value of the company.